Chapter One: A New Country. I didn't want to come to Oman. I was happy back home in England with my friends. I didn't have any friends in Oman. My mum didn't listen. It's going to be boring in Oman, I said. No friends, and nothing to do. My sister Sarah was angry too. She didn't want to leave her friends, but it was no good. My dad had work in Muscat, the capital of Oman, so we went. We arrived in Muscat at ten o'clock at night, and it was hot. Most men wore white, a long white dress. It was called a thorb, my mum said, and a little white hat. Everything was very different from England. A man helped us with our bags. A car was there for us with a driver. We got in, and he drove off. It was dark, and I was tired. I closed my eyes. I didn't want to see Oman. I wasn't interested. After about thirty or forty minutes, the car stopped suddenly. We were at our new house. It was big and white, with a garden at the front and back. We carried our bags into the house. My dad brought two cold drinks for Sarah and me. Mum went upstairs to make our beds ready. When I went upstairs, the air conditioning was on in my room. It was wonderful to feel cold again. I changed my clothes, got into bed. And soon slept. I opened my eyes early the next morning. Why was everything white? Where was I? Why was there nothing in my room? Then I remembered. I closed my eyes, but I couldn't sleep again. I got up. When I went downstairs, I saw my mum and sister at the breakfast table. I ate my breakfast with them. The bread was different here. Everything's different, I thought. I have lots of things to do today. Said my mum. You can help me, or you can go to the swimming pool across the road. But it's best to go now, before it's very hot. Sarah and I ran upstairs and found our things. We didn't want to stay in our new house. Five minutes later, mum. Sarah and I went across the road. There were about forty buildings there, flats, not houses. They were white, and not very tall. There was one flat on the ground floor, and a second flat on the first floor in every building. 
and every building had a little garden in front and a bigger garden at the back too. You can come here often, said Mum. This swimming pool is for the people in these flats and our house too. The sea's over there, but it's better to come here when it's hot. There were some more children at the swimming pool. First, I saw a boy and a girl. The two of them were about 12 or 13. They had dark hair and dark eyes. Then I saw a girl with them. She was a year or two younger than them. She had red hair and a pink face. My mum looked at the children and then looked at us. You see, Jamie? You can make new friends here in Muscat, she said noisily. They're nice children. You can go and play with them. I looked down at my feet. My face was very pink. The children in the swimming pool looked at us. The older girl smiled. Perhaps she felt sorry for us. My mum gave Sarah and me two bottles of cold water and left. It was only ten o'clock, but it was very hot. We quickly went into the swimming pool. The water was wonderfully cold. I swam up and down. I wanted to make new friends, but it wasn't easy. I don't like talking to people for the first time. But then the girl with the pink face swam over to Sarah and me. Hi, I'm Ruth. I'm from Australia. I moved here six months ago. My mum and dad work at one of the big hotels here. Those two are my friends. They're from Lebanon. He's called Tamor and she's called Nadine. We come to the swimming pool every day in the summer. They arrived here about two years ago. They speak Arabic, English and French. I'm learning Arabic, but I can't say a lot. <laughs> That's good for my Arabic teacher, my mum says. Usually I talk a lot. <laughs> what are your names? She asked, and then she stopped speaking. So we told her. Tamor and Nadine swam nearer. They were twins, and they were thirteen. Do you like it here in Oman? I asked. Yes, it's nice. I like the winter. It's very hot now, but in the winter it's good. Sometimes we stay all weekend by the sea. There's a lot to do in the winter, said Tamor. You can see turtles and swim with dolphins, said Ruth. The weather is better here in a month or two. It's colder then, said Tamor. What do you do now, in the summer? I asked. 
There isn't much to do. We come to the swimming pool every day. A lot of people leave Oman in the summer because it's very hot here. We were in Lebanon earlier this month and we came back only last week. It's very quiet here in the summer. Nothing much happens when it's very hot, said Taymor. But he was wrong. Very wrong. Chapter 2 The Garden At 12 my mum arrived at the swimming pool. Can you come to my house this afternoon? Asked Taymor quietly. Ask your mum. We can play on my computer there. After we ate, I asked her. Well, I'm going to the shops this afternoon with Sarah, my mum said. So, yes, you can go to Taymor's house, but be home by four o'clock, Jamie. Don't be late. So I went to Taymor's house and we played on his computer. Then his mum called him. Don't forget, Taymor. You must water Tom's garden today. You didn't do it yesterday. Go and do it now. Come on, Jamie, said Taymor. You can help. Tom is our neighbour. He comes from Scotland and he goes back there every summer. We must water the flowers in his garden every day when he isn't here. Well, I must. My mum never asks Nadine. It's always me. I understand, Taymor. My sister never does any work. It's always me, too. We went to Tom's garden. Tom lived on the ground floor in the last building. There were two ground floor flats between Taymor's flat and Tom's flat. There were no flats on the right of Tom's flat. Nobody lives in the flats next to Tom, Taymor told me. They left Oman and went back home. But there's somebody new in the flat over Tom's flat. I don't know him, but he's English, my mum says. There was a hose in Tom's garden. Taymor took it in his hand. Oh, I don't like watering the garden, Taymor said, and he looked at me. But I love watering people. Yeah! Get off! I cried, and I ran up and down the garden. Taymor ran after me. The water from the hose was cold. My clothes were soon wet. My hair was wet. My legs and feet were wet. Everything was wet. I ran to the water tap. 
took off the hose and put a bucket under the tap. When there was lots of water in the bucket, I took it in my hand and ran after Taymor. Whoosh! Now he was wet too. I ran with the bucket back to the tap. We ran up and down the garden for a time. The two of us were wet now and we couldn't stop laughing. Stop! I'm tired, I said in the end. I need to sit down. There were two old garden chairs near the door to Tom's flat, out of the hot sun. Taymor and I went and sat down on them. I closed my eyes for five minutes. I opened them when I heard two men in the first floor flat over our heads. Nobody can hear us, George. The man in the flat under us is in Scotland. Nobody is living in the flats next door. Nothing happens here in the summer. We came here for that, said one of the men. I looked at Taymor, but said nothing. I wanted to hear the two men. We needed to stay quiet. Taymor understood. When is she arriving, Martin? Asked the second man. This weekend. From London to Muscat. How long is she in Oman for? Asked the second man. Ten days. And then they want to take her back home. Ah, <laughs> yes. The man said with a laugh. But she's not going back to London. They're never going to see her again. Here or back home in England. When we finish here, I'm taking the money. And I'm going to have a nice, long, expensive holiday. I'm going to buy a house by the sea. A big, expensive house. Of course. But let's go in now. It's very hot out here. I need a cold drink. The door upstairs opened and then closed. I looked at Taymor. We got up and we walked out of the garden very quietly. We didn't speak. We walked quickly back to Taymor's flat, opened the door and went to his room. He closed the door behind us. Did you hear that? They're going to kill someone said Taymor. Perhaps someone famous. I know. It's terrible. They're going to kill a woman when she arrives here in Muscat. Her family isn't going to see her again, I said. Somebody's going to give them a lot of money for this. So they're hitmen. Oh, what can we do? Shall we go to the police and tell them about the two men? Taymor asked. I don't know. Are they going to listen to us? Are they going to believe our story? You're right. Adults never listen, said Taymor. 
The police are going to tell us you're only kids and this is a kid's story. And who are these men going to kill? We don't know. Let's learn more first. Who is she? Why do they want to kill her? Then we can go to the police, I said. Let's tell Nadine. She can help us, said Tamor. And Ruth. Her mum and dad meet lots of important people. Perhaps they know this woman. OK, I said, and I looked at my watch. But I must go home now. Let's all meet tomorrow morning. We don't have much time to help this woman. Chapter 3 The Mystery Woman Hitmen here in Musket, said Ruth. The next morning when we told her. I can't believe it. This woman's in danger. We must save her. But how can we? It's a mystery. Yes, it is a mystery. But let's think for a minute. What do we know? I said. A woman is coming to Muscat from England this weekend. She's famous, we think. She's staying here for ten days and then going back to England. But in those ten days, those men are going to kill her. Well... Which famous women are coming to Muscat this weekend? We need to find out, said Nadine. Let's go to our house, she said. You two can look on the computer. Perhaps you can find out something on the internet. Sarah, Ruth and I can look in the newspaper. Perhaps there's something about her in the Oman Times. But after half an hour, we stopped looking. There was nothing on the internet or in the newspaper. It's all about today and yesterday, not about things this weekend, said Nadine. Ruth looked at her watch. I must go home for lunch, she said. But I'm going to ask my parents. Perhaps they know. Meet you back at the swimming pool later, about five o'clock. In the afternoon, we stayed at home. We didn't go out because it was very hot. At five o'clock, we walked across the road to the swimming pool. When we came near it, we could see Ruth, Nadine and Tamor. They were there before us. They smiled. They knew something. I asked my mum and dad, said Ruth. The Minister for Culture and the Arts 
is arriving from England on Friday, they said. And she's a woman, said Nadine excitedly. There's a big art exhibition here. She's coming for that, said Ruth. So we found the mystery woman. Good work, I said. But it's not going to be easy to save her, said Tamor. We stopped smiling. Tamor was right. How could we stop the hitman? Let's tell our parents everything, said Nadine. Then they can tell the police. They're not going to believe us, I said. Jamie's right, said Sarah. But we must do something. So I say. Let's talk to my mom," said Tamor. "She's going to be home in about ten minutes. We can tell her when she arrives," said Nadine. We sat in their garden, out of the sun, and we waited for their mom. In the end, we heard her car. And then we saw her. Mom, we've got something important to tell you," said Nadine and Tamor at the same time. And then they stopped. There was a man behind their mother. He had three big bags in his hands. Oh, what's that? Kids, this is Mr. Williams. He lives in the flat over Tom's flat. He saw me with these bags by my car. I went to the shops earlier, so there was a lot to carry. He helped me, carried all my bags from the car. Now don't stand there. Tamor, Nadine, take the bags off him. She smiled at Mr. Williams. Thank you for your help, she said. It was very nice of you. I'm happy to help a neighbour. He smiled. Bye, kids. He said when he left. It's good to have nice neighbors. Mr. Williams helped your mom with her car this morning too, Ruth. He always says hello and good morning. What a nice man! Now, what did you want to tell me? Um, nothing important," said Tamor quickly. Well. Take those bags in for me. Are you hungry? Would you like something to eat? She asked. When their mum was in the flat, we began whispering. He's one of the hit men, said Tamor. So, Mister Hitman is now Mister Nice Neighbor. I said. Which one was he? Asked Sarah. He wanted to go in for a cold drink. I said. Well, we can't tell our mum now. Your nice neighbor is a hit man. She isn't going to believe that. Said Tamor. No. You're right about that," said Nadine. "I know. Let's go and speak to the minister. We can tell her about the killers." But the exhibition opens on Sunday," 
Why is she coming on Friday? I asked. My dad told me, said Ruth. There's a party for the Sultan and the VIPs. You know, very important people on Saturday. They can meet and talk and see the pictures then. Of course, the minister is going to be at that party. So let's tell her when she arrives, said Sarah. Hmm. We can't speak to her at the airport. Think of the police and all the airport security guards. We're never going to walk past all of them, said Taymor. What about this party? I asked. Can we talk to her there? Where's it going to be? The art exhibition is at one of the big hotels, said Ruth. It's of Omani and British pictures. My mum and dad are going to the party. Are you going? I asked. No, it's for adults only. Right. But we can talk to her before she goes into the party, I said. Before the hitmen kill her. Chapter 4 The Hotel Mom, I'm going over to Taymor's house. Back about nine o'clock, I said. Don't be late, said my mum. Mum, I'm going over to Jamie's house. Back about nine o'clock, said Taymor in his house. Don't be late, said his mum. It wasn't right. We knew. But we must stop those men and save the minister, I said. Our parents are going to understand in the end, when the police find the killers. We took a taxi to the hotel. The party began at 7.30 p.m. But we arrived at the hotel at 6.30 p.m. We wanted to be early. There were a lot of police officers on the road in front of the hotel. They stopped our taxi and looked in the back of the car and under it. There were more security guards at the door of the hotel. One of them said something in Arabic to Taymor, and he answered. The man nodded his head, and we walked in. What did you say to him? I asked Taymor. I said, Dad's down by the sea with the car. We're staying at the hotel. There were lots of nice big chairs in the hotel. We sat near the door. We could see people when they came in and went out. After some time, 
lots of people began to arrive for the party. We looked carefully at everybody. They were in their best clothes. Most men wore white daubs with beautiful silver daggers. They wear them only on very important days, said Taymor. The minister's picture was on the internet, so we knew her face. We looked at our watches. It was now 7.25 p.m. Where is she? Perhaps she's not coming, I said. Perhaps she's dead, he whispered. I didn't say a thing. There wasn't time. Just then, there was a lot of noise and a lot of people at the door of the hotel. Some big, tall men came in first. Security guards. Then some Amani VIPs. And then she arrived. The Minister for Culture and the Arts. It was time to speak to her. I was afraid, but there was no time to think. Taymor and I walked quickly across to her. Minister! Minister! I called. Mrs. Summers! cried Taymor. The security guards began walking over to us. Mrs. Summers, we must speak to you. Only two minutes, please, I called. The security guards were in front of us now. Mrs. Summers, it's very important, cried Taymor. The security guards put their hands on our arms. Minister, I cried. We need to talk to you now. One security guard checked my arms, legs and back. The second guard checked Taymor. Nothing, Mrs. Summers. They're okay. They said. The minister walked over to us. I was afraid, but we had our two minutes with her. Mrs. Summers, my friend and I were in a garden. We overheard a conversation between two men. They're going to kill you. Going to kill me? They said that? She asked. Well, no, but they said a famous woman is coming from England at the end of the week to stay in Oman for ten days. But she's not going to go back to England. Nobody is going to see her again. The minister nodded. She looked at one of the security guards, the most important one, I think, then she looked back at us again. Did they say my name? She asked. No, no. Taymor and I said at the same time. Did they say any name? She asked. No, no. we said. How are they going to kill me? Did they say? No, I answered. They didn't say kill, 
But they said she's not going back to England, said Taymor. That's true, said the minister. After Oman, I'm going to China. But I'm not here for ten days. I leave tomorrow morning. So, you see, your story isn't right. You made a mistake, boys. Kids. <laughs> said the security guard. And he laughed. Thank you. You wanted to help, but be careful, smiled the minister. It isn't easy when you overhear a conversation. You can easily make a mistake. Now it's time for me to go. Good night, boys. And she walked away. But, but, I said. But she didn't want to listen any more. Two security guards had our arms and we couldn't move. They asked us, Where, Where do you live? And then they took us to the hotel door. They called a taxi for us. Before we got in it, they told us, Never come back to this hotel again. My Parents are going to kill me, said Taymor. We can't tell them. I don't want to stay home for a month because my parents are angry with me, I said. But Jamie, why were we wrong? How did we make a mistake? asked Taymor. I didn't have an answer. Chapter 5 Mr. Williams is Flat Sarah was in her room. She wanted to hear everything. So I told her all about our conversation with the minister. Did you imagine that conversation between the two men in the garden? She asked. No! Tamor heard them too. I'm going to my room. The next morning, I didn't go to the swimming pool. I wasn't happy. I didn't want to see Tamor, Nadine or Ruth. I asked the same questions again and again. Why were we wrong? What are those two men going to do? Who are they going to kill? Yesterday's newspaper was on the breakfast table. There was a story about the art exhibition. I began to read. The exhibition is on for ten days. Then the pictures go back to London... The most expensive picture is a painting of a woman in a black dress. I looked at the little black and white picture. I thought about the conversation between the two men. 
When is she arriving, Martin? This weekend. From London to Muscat. How long is she in Oman for? Ten days. And then they want to take her back home. Ah, <laughs> yes. But she's not going back to London. They're never going to see her again. Here or back home in England. Of course. Not a woman, but a painting of a woman. I put on my shoes and ran to the swimming pool. Sarah, Nadine and Tamor were there. First hitmen, now thieves. Are you right about this? We don't want to make a second mistake, said Sarah. Suddenly, we heard Ruth. Jamie! Sarah! Nadine! Tamor! She cried. She ran over to us. Her face was pink and hot. It's a painting! She cried. We know, but how do you know? Asked Nadine. My mum phoned my dad. She went to the art exhibition this morning. Thieves took a painting late last night. It's the most expensive picture. Do you think it's in Mr. Williams's flat? Asked Nadine. Let's see. I saw Mr. Williams about an hour ago, said Tamor. He got into his car and drove away. Let's go back to Tom's garden. It was very quiet in the garden. The flat over it was quiet too. We stood and looked up at it. Let's climb up, said Nadine. Bring the table over here. We can put a chair on it and climb over the balcony. I can climb up, said Tamor. No, I'm the tallest. I can do it, I said. A few minutes later, I was on the balcony. I looked through the windows. I could see chairs, a table and a television. There was a door into a back room too, but no painting. Jamie, can you open the door? Sometimes they don't lock, called Nadine from the garden. She was right. The lock didn't work. I opened the door easily and went into the flat. I was afraid. I didn't want Mr. Williams to find me here. I looked quickly at the front room. Nothing interesting. I put my head into the back room. Black trousers on the bed. White shirt on a chair. Then I saw something little and black on a table by the bed. It was a sat-nav. A satellite navigator. My dad has got a sat-nav. It helps him to drive in Oman. It tells him, go right or go left. It tells him, drive on this road. 
It helps him to find new places and to go back to old places. It's a very good thing for a new driver or a driver in a new country to have. I switched on the sat-nav. I looked at the pictures on it. It showed many different places in Oman. You can put in new places too. After you go to a place, you can put it into your sat-nav. Then the sat-nav can help you to find that place again later. I looked at the places on Mr. Williams's sat-nav. There were two coffee shops, the Art Exhibition Hotel, a second hotel, Ali's house, George's house, my flat and home. My flat and home. Why did he put flat and home? I looked at my flat. Yes, that was right. It was here. Then I looked at home. It was in the mountains. Why? He didn't live there. There was a pen on the table. I quickly wrote the sat-nav information about home on my arm. Time to go before Mr. Williams came home. I climbed back over the balcony and down into the garden. Then I told the others what was on the sat-nav. My mum's got a sat-nav in her car, said Nadine. I can bring it. She came back five minutes later with her mum's sat-nav. We put the information from my arm into it. Hmm, it's not very far. It's only 30 or 40 minutes from Muscat by car, said Taymor. There's not much there, said Nadine. Only one road. No more buildings. My parents want to go for a drive in the mountains this weekend. Perhaps we can drive to this place then. Let's ask them, said Sarah. Can Taymor and I come too? asked Nadine. And me, said Ruth. It's a big car. We can all go, said Sarah. Chapter 6 Ruth's Place The next morning, Taymor, Nadine, and Ruth arrived at our house and quickly got into the car with Sarah, our parents and me. We're going to the museum first, then we're going to the mountains, said my dad with the sat-nav in his hand. Can we go to this mountain? I asked. I showed him the place on the sat-nav. It said, Ruth's place. 
Is that Ruth's favourite place? Asked my dad. Yeah, said Sarah. OK, we can look at it. And then we can stop for something to eat. The museum was interesting for my parents, but we kids wanted to go to Ruth's place at once. I looked at my watch every five minutes. Are we going to be late? Is the painting going to be there? I thought. Can we go to the mountains now, Dad? Asked Sarah. OK, he said. We all smiled. My dad put his hand on the sat-nav. Here we go. Ruth's place. We drove away from the museum. There were not many cars on the road. So, tell me about this place, Ruth. Why is it your favourite? Asked my dad. Um, well, it's very quiet, said Ruth. My dad laughed. <laughs> All a man is quiet, he said. And it's interesting, people say. Well, interesting for us, said Ruth. Yes, very interesting, said Nadine. Well, I want to see this very interesting place, said my mum with a smile. We drove for 30 minutes. There were no trees or buildings or people. Only mountains and the road. Then, in front of us, we saw a little building. There it is! Ruth cried. Is that it? Said my mum. What's interesting about this place? Asked my dad. Dad, can we stop the car? I asked. We all got out of the car. It was very hot. Mr Jackson, Mrs Jackson, look at the building, said Nadine. It's very old, but it has electricity. There are lots of old buildings in the mountains in Oman, but they don't usually have electricity. Why does this building have it? The door didn't open. It had a lock on it. There was only one little window. My dad looked through it. I don't understand. It has air conditioning. Why is there air conditioning in this old building? He asked. Dad, we know the answer. They need a cold building for the picture. What are you talking about? Asked Mum. We've got something to tell you, I said. We told them about when we overheard the two men on the balcony and about the painting in the art exhibition. At first, we thought they want to kill someone. But in the end, we understood the mystery. It was all about the painting, said Sarah. And you didn't tell us before, asked my mum. I'm not happy. You must always tell us about important things. And how did you find out about this place? 
she's not going to be happy about that, I thought. Mrs. Jackson, Mr. Jackson, can we go into the building? Asked Ruth quickly. Well, I have lots more questions. But yes, let's go in, said my dad. He walked over to the door and kicked it. <laughs> the lock broke and the door opened. We saw a large box in front of us. We opened it quickly. A woman's face looked back at us. It was the painting. Phone the police, Joe, my mum said to my dad. My dad put his hand in his trousers, but his phone wasn't there. He went back to the car, but the phone wasn't there. What happened? I had my phone earlier, he said. Perhaps it's at home, said my mum. Take my phone. Dad, Mum, look! A car's coming! cried Sarah suddenly. Far away, there was a black car. It came quickly up the road to us. Oh no! It's the thieves! cried Tamor. We need to go. Quickly! said my dad. Shall we take the picture with us? I asked. No, let's leave it here, or the thieves are going to come after us in their car, said my mum. Get into the car, everyone! Quick! cried my dad. When we drove away, my dad asked, Can you look? for the nearest police station on the sat-nav. The nearest one is behind us, on this road, said my mum. But we can't go there. The next one is about 30 kilometres away. We need to take the road to the airport. My dad drove very fast but we could see the black car behind us. It didn't stop at the building. It came after us. My dad drove faster and faster. We left the mountains behind us. We drove past a hospital and some houses. My dad drove slower now. Go left. Drive two kilometres, said the sat-nav. We're nearly there now, kids. The thieves aren't going to come after us down all these roads, said my dad. And they're not going to drive to a police station with us, said my mum. We were very near the police station now. We found a place for our car, but then... Mr. Jackson, look! It's them in that car! cried Tamor. The black car was not far away, and it came nearer. Quickly! Everybody! Into the police station, said my mum. We ran to the police station. There was a little building in front with only one police officer in it. He cried something in Arabic, but we didn't stop. We felt afraid. Soon we were at the door of the police station. 
the black car drove up to the little building. The car window came down and the driver said something to the police officer. Then the door of the car opened and a man got out. He was an Amani police officer, but not in a usual blue Amani police car. He had a phone in his hand. My dad walked over to him. The police officer spoke to him in Arabic. My dad didn't understand. I couldn't understand. But the police officer spoke angrily to my dad. Tamor and Nadine smiled. Then Tamor ran over and helped my dad. You left your phone at the museum, he says. The people in the museum gave it to him and he drove after you. He wanted to give back your phone. But you drive very fast, he says. He's not happy about that. You must drive slowly when you have children in the car, he says. Tamor, can you tell him about the painting? I drove fast because I was afraid. We were in danger, I felt, and I wanted to get away from the thieves. I made a mistake about his car. It had a police officer in it, but I didn't know that. Tell him that. Fifteen minutes later, the police knew everything. Now they smiled. They took my dad back with them to the mountains. A young police officer drove me, Sarah, Mum and our friends home. We waited for Dad there. My mum phoned Tamor and Nadine's parents, and Ruth's parents too. Please come to our house, my mum said. They were very angry when they first heard the story. Next time tell us everything, they said. But in the end they told us... Good, Good work, work, kids. Three hours later, my dad arrived home. We all asked him questions at the same time. OK. Wait a minute. Can I speak? The police have got the painting. They've got Mr Williams and his friend too. They're very happy to find the picture. We must go to the police station tomorrow morning to tell them the story from the beginning. From the beginning? I said. That was only a week ago. At that time, I thought, it's boring here. But in the end, it was the most exciting week of my life. I can't wait for next week. <laughs>